What's up, Tech Heart? It's a nice rainy day here in the southern Midwest. Catch that one? I have my awesome Framework 13 laptop, and we're going to keep this Omarky party going on. Framework made a tweet about Omarky, and they added a how to install post on their forums. And I've been loving Omarky, so we're going to go full tilt and put it on our Framework laptop. And you wonderful humans are going to come along for the ride. So, let's dive right in. I have my Omarky 3.0 ISO file burned to my Ventoy USB stick. However, all you have to do is download Belina Etcher, download the Omarky 3.0 ISO file from omarky.org, and use Belina Etcher to burn it to any USB. After that, you can install Omarky in under five minutes, I think. You know the only thing faster than installing Omarky? is subscribing to the Tech Heart channel. It really helps us, and 90% of you suckers aren't subbed. So give it up for us. I'm going to spin the camera on around, and uh, I'm just going to jump into the installer. Let's go! So, I'll just insert my USB stick. Somewhere over there. And for my framework, I push the F12 key to get into the bias. Come on, little framework, you can do it. Boom, we'll catch the bias, and we will go down to our USB device. For me, that's gonna load up Ventoy. And I'll scroll down and I'll find Omarky. There it is. If you don't use Ventoy, as I stated, you can just burn that Omarky 3.0 ISO to any USB you have using Bolina Etcher. Omarchi's well, been such a cool distro. It's more like Arch Linux, Hyperland, and then DHH's theme and customization on top. But I've been so impressed with it, the community seems to love it, and it sure is slick, fast, sleek, and gangster. See, it's just Arch Linux. Here you can select your region. So English for us. We can do our username. Tech Heart. And our password, which is Tech Heart. Our full name, this is for Git authentication. That'll be Tech Heart. And we'll use techheart at techheart.life. I'll keep Omarky for the host name. That's fine by me. Time zone. Los Angeles. So when all that's correct, you can say yes. And first we'll have to select our disk. Make sure you select the right one. For me, it's a one terabyte Samsung but this will overwrite any disk you select here. Yes, we can format that. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can... Your disk is toast. Go, 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 go. Hustle out, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. The system, I don't wanna be a slave. I've been doing shit my way, uh, or the highway, and in the driveway is a nice range. Cause I grind through the climb, I invite pain. You never hear me, bitch, nah, I don't complain. Just gotta. Oh, Marky, baby! Even on this older first gen framework laptop with an 11th gen Intel CPU, we installed in 5 minutes 22 seconds, baby! On faster hardware, I've seen people install this in like 50 seconds. But, alas, we've got a Marky Rockstars! With our tech heart. Password. Bob's your uncle. Welcome to Omarky. You're in for a great computing adventure. We can do a system update. Well, Marky pops up with an updater. However, let's connect to Wi-Fi. Hmm. 
from Bob's your uncle, we now have network and it'll auto connect every time. I think it's super W, yeah. Now we'll do an update on the system. Go, go, go. Man, so many passwords. We'll have to reboot, but now we'll have a fully updated Omarky. So there you are. For you, maybe you're completely done. However, I want to do a little bit more. I'm going to take the framework over to my desktop and I'm going to hook it up to a vertical monitor so we can get a dual monitor setup. I'll show you how to set that up in Hyperland and we're going to take a look around this awesome Omarky Arch Linux installation brought to us by a really cool dev, DHH and do a little more with it. Are you still here? Come on! Okay, rock stars, we're all booted in. Now, we should point out a couple things. I'm also running a Mac Mini right here, and its monitors are this Samsung M8 and that larger 55 inch on the wall. So these two monitors are not connected to Omarky or the Framework laptop. However, the Framework laptop is connected to the Dell 24 inch. Let me stop the screensaver. I'll press the space bar. And do you notice the Dell screen is not in vertical mode? So we've got to take care of that. Let's open up a terminal. I'll try to make it really big for y'all. Can I get zoomed in there? Will that help? Okay. We can move into the dot config slash hyper folder. I think I can make that a little smaller now. And I can run an nvim on monitors.com. Oh, we got that glare right here. I don't know if that's going to kill us. Yeah, it kind of sucks. So I already found the command that I need to do. Let me uh, unhash that. It'll brighten up. So for the multi-monitor setup, a vertical Dell 1920 by 1080, which we're going to make 1080 by 1920, is called DP1. So the line in the config we had to add was monitor equals DP1, comma preferred, comma 0x0, and that 0x0 makes sure that the vertical monitor goes to the left. So when we move our mouse cursor this way, we hit the vertical monitor, and then auto, and transform, comma 1, will put it in vertical mode. So let me zoom back out. I'm going to have to turn again. Let me see here if I can get that done. Okay. And now the moment that I save this monitors.comp file, let's see what happens to that other monitor. Look it up, baby! Bob is your uncle! Now, if I take my mouse cursor and go to the left, it shows up on this monitor over here. Might be hard for you to see, but I assure you that it's there. Let me get out of here. I can do a super W to close that window. And now look at our setup, dude! That is pretty gangster! We could come over here and open the Omarky menu. We go to apps. Let's look for a browser. Lots of good apps in here. Oh, there's Chromium. I'll just open that because why not? We have a full-size Chromium browser. I'll set a password. Check heart, baby. And there we go. We've got a big browser on a vertical monitor that's very useful. Move the mouse to the right and it shows up on this monitor here. Perfect. Now let me get this edited again. I'm gonna move into this monitor. Now let's take a closer look at Hyperland. As mentioned, you can go up here to the Hyperland menu. This is where everything pops up. However, you can also press Super Alt Space. So I'll do that, Super Alt Space. That pops right up. I want to show everybody the Learn tab in Omarky. This is really cool. One really helpful one is just the key bindings, and it shows you all of Omarky's key bindings right here. So these are all the key bindings that you can use. They're in a nice, easy to read mode, and it's all of your key bindings. Pretty cool. So we can do Super Alt Space, go back to Learn, 
and let's learn about Omarki. This pulls up a really cool Omarki manual. And in here, DHH and the team has given us information about all parts of Omarki that we might want to know. From the basics, to getting started, to navigation themes, hotkeys, everything is right here. This is really nice for somebody coming over to Hyperland because it explains so much. For example, dot files. That might be a hard one to grasp, but in here it'll tell you all about your configuration files, where they are, and how they work in Omarki. Normally all your config files are in dot config slash hyper, but with Omarki, some are in like dot local slash Omarki, etc, etc. And this help screen will let you know where everything is. Pretty sick. We can do a super W to close that. Super alt space. Go right back into learn. And there's even more. You can learn about Hyperlink, Arch, NeoVim, Bash. Let's open the Hyperlink one. Yeah, it's the Hyperlin Wiki, and this is sick. This is right where I learned how to do the multi-monitor vertical setup. Super W, super alt space. Omarki is powerful. It's a great theme. It's customized wonderfully. We can go down here to update. We already did an update when we first booted in, but you can update Omarki, the branch, the config, extra themes, process, hardware, password, time zone. It's all here. You can change your themes. If we go to style, theme, you have all these different themes to choose from. Let's check out Tokyo Night. Boom! Just like that. We can go for Groovebox. Bang! We could go to Kinagawa. Boom! That's pretty nice. You also have setup where you can tweak your audio, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, power profile, monitors. Oh, let's just tap on monitors. That easily brings up the monitor setup that I changed. Here's the changes that I did, but it's an easy way to get there if you didn't know where that comp file was. It's in .config slash hyper slash monitors .conf. But anyway, Omarki tries to help. Also, you can get into the key bindings, and it'll give you some of your key bindings. I'll go over some of them. Super return brings up a terminal. Super F is a file manager. Super B is a browser. Super shift B is a private browser. Super M is for music. Super N is your editor. Super T is activity. It brings up BTOP. That's pretty cool. Super D is Docker. Super G is signal. Super O is obsidian. Super slash lets you see your passwords. Now, notice that Omarki uses one password, but I use Bitwarden. So Omarki is a great setup, but you can go in and edit it. I might add Bitwarden because that's a platform I use. Super A is chat GPT. Super shift A is grok and so on and so forth. I think most Omarki users will need to do some modifications to these config files to set it up for themselves. There's an install menu. You can install a package, something from the AUR, a web app, a TUI app, a service, a style, a development, etc., etc., etc. Even AI. We're living in the future, right? We can remove packages. We can update the system. We've already went there. And let's click the about. Yeah, it tells us all about our Ormarki setup. Oops, that doesn't plus very well. At any rate, last, you have system, and this is where you can shut down, where you can lock, activate your screensaver, suspend, relaunch, restart, or shut down. Again, to go through some of the apps, 1Password, Alacrity, Basecamp, ChatGPT, Chromium Discord, Docker, Figma, Files, all sorts of Google stuff, Caden Live, I like to see that. LibreOffice, because we need to make some documents and whatnot. Local Send. Local Send is a really cool app to move files, pictures, data, text to different computers. Really helpful. OBS Studio, Obsidian, Signal, Spotify, Typora, WhatsApp, X, YouTube. It's jam packed with a bunch of software. And again, you can always make it your own. One last thing I think I'd like to show is I have a touchpad on this framework. And normally when you swipe with four fingers left or right, 
you can move to different workspaces. Up here, one, two, three, four, five. That currently doesn't work. If we go to the Hyperwind wiki and pull up gestures, scroll down here, and we can find one right here, gesture equals three, comma, horizontal workspace. Let me open that over here. Here we go, I have it right over here now. So, if I go to config hyper, I'm gonna vim my hyperlin.com. Okay, this just loads everything. So, where would gestures be? Oh, config marky maybe. No, that's current theme. Maybe input? So, config hyper input.com. Let's check that out. Yeah, I think this is where it's at. So this is input, and I think I can just add right here. I'm gonna make sure that nothing with gestures is already in. Okay, here we go. There's a section down here. Enable touchpad gestures for changing workspaces, right here. Okay, so here it says gesture equals three, comma, horizontal, comma, workspace. So let's just uncomment this, oops. We'll save that. Let me try. Look at that. Now three fingers moves our workspaces. This is exactly how I like it set up. So it was already in here. We just had to uncomment gesture equals three, comma, horizontal, comma, workspace on dot config slash hyper input dot comp. Baby! Dude, we're already rocking around this little hyperlin setup. On my framework laptop, it's pretty stinking cool. We can easily add another monitor. And baby, we're rocking this thing. What do you guys think? Let's flip on over to an outro, suckers! There you have the awesome rock stars, Omarky 3.0 right on the framework laptop. And we can add multi-monitors. We could have added both of them. What do you guys think? I am in love with Omarky. I'm more in love with Hyperlind, but Omarky gives us a really good base, and we can configure that sucker to our heart's pitter-patter content. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Have you given Omarky an install? Are you interested? Do you think it's a cool project? Or are you on the other side and think it's racist? Never mind. Tech Heart out.